Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Louis Slagle, who's the Senior Vice President of Life Insurance Distribution with Partners Advantage. Louis, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hey, uh, give us a little bit of your background and your journey into the financial services industry. And um, I'm always curious and love to know the story behind what gets people uh, interested in specific industries. So were you the uh, uh, third grader doing a career day going one day I want to be in financial services or uh, what was the the uh, ge- uh, genesis to getting you into this industry? <laughs> You know, I, I think if you ask anyone in our industry, especially those that specialize in insurance, if you thought you'd be in insurance, most people would say no. Yep. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those you, you find on your own journey. Um, I had actually got into this. I just out of, out of college um, was a personal producer. Um, you know, I always had a sales nature, you know, liked working with individuals. I uh, liked the sales aspect of it, liked helping people. And so um, got into personal production is really kind of where I, I started my journey. Um, you know, that that kind of evolved from, you know, I, I'm a natural coach. Uh, I like helping people. I like people, you know, seeing them become successful. Um, and so that, you know, led into some more le- senior leadership roles and in coaching and helping other producers become more successful. So. And and then just kind of grows from there because I think when you – that's a recurring thread that I hear when I talk to a lot of professionals is you find those things where it's like, you know, I, I, I viewed my position more than just selling widgets or selling services. I wanted to help people. I wanted to, you know, help them grow personally, professionally. I wanted to do the best for them and be an educator and an advocate. And I think that kind of 30,000-foot uh, view and, and it kind of zeroes out from, you know, give me money from my back pocket it into how can I help you as a person? And that kind of blossoms from there, doesn't it? It, it does. And in our really in, in our industry, it's it's all about relationships, right? And those that are successful have lifelong relationships that they really connect on a deeper level with folks and try and find success collectively. Um, you know, the the set it and forget it or sell it and walk away uh, just doesn't appeal to me. Some people like that. Um, you know, for me personally, I just I like to get to know people and, you know, have a longstanding relationship where we can grow and and see success jointly and, and, and go from there. So, yep. So then what led you into working with a marketing organization like Partners Advantage? Uh, So I spent a number of years at a, at a carrier building out distribution there. We built about a dozen different products throughout the years. We built that distribution up, but you know, being able to see uh, marketing organizations at a 30,000 foot view, seeing how they're all doing different things, you know, made me think, you know, this is, there needs to be something different in this space. And, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of the same, you know, rinse and repeat type strategies with different IMOs. And, and I, you know, had a good relationship with Partners Advantage and, and they tapped me on the shoulder. They were going through a growth mode and, Said, hey, we need someone to really take a hold of our, our life distribution and, and take it to the next level. And I love the partnership. Again, there was a lifelong relationship. And, you know, there's there's collaboration there to be able to do something different in our space. Now, you said building out, um, you know, the the life and, and the distribution, but also, am I correct in thinking that um, there's ways that in your industry that you can help model and craft a specific type of life insurance product? Yeah, in fact, um, we like I said, when I was at uh, a carrier, we built oh, a dozen or so products. Um, a couple of them were with Partners Advantage exclusively. Um, mm-hmm. Partners Advantage over their lifespan has built, I think, ten products themselves with different carriers, and 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 that really helps you understand the products at a deeper level. Um, when you get into some really complex designs, how products are built really makes a difference as to whether you're going to see success in that in that strategy or not long term and and to be able to know really kind of how the widget's made um yeah. 
you know, without, without having to show everyone how it's made, but having that knowledge really helps you set up success for, for the folks you're working with. Yeah. That sounds really uh, neat because it's the technical side of the numbers and the nuts and the bolts, but it's the creative side of going, you know, it'd be nice if we had a product that would do this and we're hearing from the market or I, I talk with, you know, elite producers that need this. It sure would be nice if we could serve their clients with this and to be able to have that creativity and flexibility is a huge plus. Yeah, it is. And it, it gives you influence with the carriers, right? So, you know, when you're working with elite producers, you know, they, they bring a certain level of needs, expertise. Um, and, and a lot of times off the shelf stuff doesn't always work, right? So you got to get creative from a product standpoint, from an underwriting standpoint, from um, really looking outside those nine dots and, and having been in the trenches with the carrier building products, doing these things, we can go to carriers easier now and say, Here's what we need to help our lead producers be more successful, and, and they, they listen because you know they've done that. We've gone through this with them, and and they can appreciate that that knowledge that we bring to the table. Yeah. Yeah, that really is huge because you, you, you end up at in some instances and in some uh, types of things like, oh, I just feel like another number. Well, if, if you're like um, uh, what you're describing, boy, this is, you know, let me craft something to serve your needs. And that really is a, a nice relationship. And like you said, it's all about building relationships. So in addition to kind of having this flexibility to, you know, uh, serve your clients with some really unique products, what are some of the other things that sets Partners Advantage apart as an IMO? Yeah, we really focus on on four key areas. Our, we call it our four C's. Um, it's our credibility, connection, communication, and collaboration. And and really, what it does is we look at each individual practice. Um, you know what what makes you unique. How can we leverage that uniqueness to differentiate you in the market? And how to really position yourself as authority. Um, you know, because in today's world. Everyone's Googling you. You know, everyone's looking yeah. for, you know, you know, what is this person? You know, what type of credibility do they have? You know, are they looked at as a thought leader? And and everyone brings something unique to the table. And so we try and craft that uh, with their message. You know, obviously we have the product knowledge, we have the design capabilities, we have the, you know, the back office support that everyone's got, but is on the front end, how can we position you to be uh, a rock star in your in your community. So, you know, it it kind of almost is. If you just want to be average, just choose the most average provider of whatever, what whatever that it is. We're talking, right. you know, ab about insurance and IMOs. But when you start going, well, of course we offer great products. If we didn't, we wouldn't be in business. But it's almost like that's where some competitors stop. Well, we have wonderful products. Well, then what? So if you want to be in that elite realm, you know, of course we have wonderful products, but we have custom crafted products, which, or we help position you as, or we give you, you know, the inside track to, you know, inner circle or mastermind or communication or connection. And I love those four C's because it really is something where it's like, yeah, yeah, that, we pick up where the others leave off. Yeah, and, and we take we take that uniqueness of every individual, and we love making introductions within our distribution because not everyone does everything well, right? And so you pair up specialists in different areas for them to find opportunities jointly. Um, we're actually hosting a, a mastermind here um, shortly where we're bringing in a lot of like-minded individuals to come in and share ideas, um, collaborate with each other. You know, we, it's a great opportunity for us to get feedback, to know what do they need to build their practice? Where do we need to continue to invest? Um, and, and it just goes along that lines of, of lifetime, re lifelong relationships that, that we look to, to secure. Yep. And, and I think that uh, when you have that mindset of abundance, um, you know, yes, one person in that mastermind you're mentioning, um, you might they might look around and go, well, that person does life insurance and that person does life insurance. They're competitors of mine. But in reality, there is so much business to go around. Nobody can get all the business. I mean, you quickly get overwhelmed. So let's learn from each other. Let's, you know, take that collective mastermind as, you know, the definition of it and let's see what works in that part of the country and what works over here and then everybody is benefiting and i think that that whole mindset really is that um law of abundance and that abundance uh, approach and then everybody wins yeah and and even i mean i've worked with some of the the best life insurance producers out there and, and the one thing i see consistently with all of them is they know what they're good at and they know what they're not good at yeah and and they stay in in their lane of here's what i know well here's what i do well and all these other things that I want to do, but I don't have expertise or it's, it's not my forte, I go partner. 
Yep. Um, and, and I find that consistently amongst all top producers and they don't look to your point, they do not look at each other as, as com- competition. They look at each other as, as a joint partner to find more opportunities. Yes. Which then just starts, um, you know, amplifying all of the things, you know, so like the, some of the parts is greater than, you know, or the, or the whole is better than some of the parts b- because, right. you know, you took this piece and it built to that piece and it built to the other piece, but individually, yeah, they're good, but together, Wow, you know, stand back. So, talk a little bit about who you're working with within the producers that you work with, because I know that Partners Advantage as an IMO works with producers, but to get to you, you've got to be at a whole different level, and then you bring a whole different suite of services and support to those producers. Right. Yeah. So, my focus really is on our elite producers that are consistently working with affluent clients. Um, so, so what does that mean? Right. Those that are in the business planning space, in the uh, executive compensation space, estate planning, you know, we do a fair amount of premium finance. So specialty markets that, you know, have a fair amount of complexity and, and more than more often than not is more than one individual selling, right? You're, you're working with CPAs, you're working with attorneys, you have probably other financial planners in the mix. Um, and, and these sales cycles take, you know, six, eight, 10 months to, to secure and, and finally place. So, um, you know, that's my expertise and everything that I do for them is all built around that type of clientele. Yeah. And, and it almost reminds me of when you hear in the industry, like the family office, you know, as an advisor, you would say, Hey, um, you're, you're worth, you're worth X number of dollars. You need more than just the regular advisor. So we provide family office services that brings everything that you would need into one spot. Well, isn't that kind of what you're uh, uh, providing to your elite producers? It's like, well, you need all kinds of support to help your agency grow, your team grow, and you could get one piece from this place and another piece from another place. Why don't we just do it all at one spot? And then now again, it's like that one-stop shop. Yeah. And you need a quarterback to help, help, you know, yeah. bring that all together. Right. Um, and so, you know, some some of the advisors I work with, they have that in place. Um, sometimes they don't, and that's where the introductions come into play. But it's really creating a good process to execute a plan. And without that, you know, then we're just selling widgets. To your point, right? Yeah. And and in this space of the affluent, that's not going to fly. You're you know, you may get lucky and you hear the random advisor that stumbles across a case that you know happens to place it great. But if you're going to do this on a consistent basis, you need to have um, a good plan, um, system and strategy in place to go execute. So, so what would something like that look like? So if you are, uh, you know, listening to this going, well, you know, I want to be that, what would that kind of support look like? And what would maybe a, I don't know, a case study or an example, like working with Louie would, would provide these types of support and results. Sure. Sure. So anyone I work with, we, we meet, pretty frequently, most often on a weekly basis. Sometimes it's for five minutes, maybe it's a half an hour, but it's really, you know, the things we focus on are, you know, first is, you know, what does your uh, discovery look like? You know, without a good discovery, um, your your plan is going to fall short because discovery is really going to get us the details needed to one, um, understand the need of the client, two, find other opportunities, and three, organize our plan of attack as we work with them on the different you know, case designs that we're going to present to them ultimately. Uh, unfortunately, um, far too often, I get pulled into cases after that's all been done and it's a mess, right? Yeah. And, and without having that up front, you know, then we're trying to scramble and save something versus having a good plan. So, so we, we have the discovery in place. Uh, second, then we start talking about prospects and pipeline. What, does your, what do your prospects look like? Who are you looking at? What is, the, what is their profile? Um, you know, what do you anticipate their needs are? What are things that we may not, you know, anticipate, but want to discover, um, after prospecting, we go into, okay, now we've done our discovery with the client. What are, you know, what are their needs? You know, I'm a big needs based, um, salesperson, uh, we, you know, where are the pain points in their life? Um, I'm not pushing a product. I'm, I'm finding solutions. Um, so we, we go ahead and, and figure out where their needs are. What are other opportunities that may not, we may not cross today, but keep in our back pocket for when we have follow-up meetings and things of that nature. So we put that plan together. Um, from there, they go, you know, execute a design or a plan that we, that we put in place with their client. Uh, then we get into the back office, you know, underwriting, case support, medicals, all the fun stuff of, of life insurance, right? It's okay. I've sold it. Now I got to wait three months. So, you know, one thing that, that I work with, with all the advisors I have, they are put on a 
uh, I'll call it a concierge level with all of our carriers. So yeah. they get top, top of stack treatment. That's something um, I request explicitly uh, for my advisors and, and they get that as opposed to most other advisors who just kind of get, you know, right in the pile. So um, that is to try and eliminate the time for underwriting, right? We want to shrink that down as, as close as possible. And, you know, in, in life insurance, we say time kills deals. And, and that's, that's usually where the deal is killed, right? It was when, when underwriting takes far too long. Uh, in it's addition to that, yeah, go oh, ahead. Mike. Let me just make a point right there because yeah. it's really interesting that concierge level support is is a huge um, opportunity and offering. And it's almost like, well, of course I should get that because I'm providing such huge volume. But what I would, the thought that crossed my mind is, what if someone is just so all over the place and they're just throwing things up against the wall and they expect that concierge level support, but they've put together just, you know, scattered random documents and paperwork. And it's like, you got to keep coming back. Well, then that's going to disrupt the whole system. But when you start with discovery, Mm -hmm. That's where you said you started. And it, it reminded me of the old saying, pro, um, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. So if you're working with discovery and then you're making sure that the process is smoothed out, then of course, when you get to the point of needing the back office um, operation support and concierge level and quickness, the package, the paperwork is going to be all put together so concisely that it's going to make it easier to move through the system at that um, higher attention level. Correct, correct. And, and, and what we add to that is, um, you know, most of these advisors we work with have something unique, right? There's usually a, a design or an underwriting need or a niche that we go ahead and if we if we can, you know, really get their arms around it is we'll buy, we'll build out underwriting carve outs for their yeah. program. Um, and, and that's we've seen a ton of success. We have, I can think of two or three in underwriting carve outs just you know, on the top of my head that we built exclusively for our producers. Now define a carve out. Uh, so for example, we, we do quite a bit of business in um, the, the uh, nonprofit space for split dollar executive comp. And when you're in the nonprofit space, typically an uh, an executive won't earn as much as maybe their counterpart at, at a for-profit company. And so they have to beef up their program to offer some sort of retirement plan, uh, which is probably not quite effective for comp, or in this case, we use split dollar. The death benefits you need in that type of scenario usually is far greater than your standard underwriting criteria, right? Which is, you know, income, net worth, there's multiples involved. And, you know, to get the funding level need provide this gives the death benefits are far outside of that normal underwriting niche yeah. and you know it's going through that process showing how we partner with them and designing that what the program looks like we're able to get a car boss saying no we're going to go outside of our normal underwriting to get you that extra death benefit needed to implement those plans so so things another like that is level of concierge level support because correct. if you submitted that same client um, package to another, you know, vendor or, or underwriter, maybe they would look at it cursory or through their regular guidelines and, and it would look like a whole different deliverable. Whereas you've got your carve out and going, okay, here's what we need. We already know this, 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 and this, and we've kind of created that to give the concierge level support. That's really Correct. awesome. Yep. Exactly. Good. So what was next? I wanted to just clarify that piece, but you were heading into another point. <laughs> Actually, we wrapped it up there. I was talking about the carve out. So I was oh, going to go to, to that next level, right? Because then, then if you look at it, we're really, you know, creating, we've, we've used that word concierge, right? From, from front end to back end, you know, from, from discovery to delivery and how do we best streamline that and, and, you know, deliver that service. So that's, that's really well, what we try and specialize. It, it gives me the, you know, when you say concierge, you think of like the high uh, Ritz Carlton level, you know, uh, front desk, you know, oh, let me get the concierge to help you with this. And it, you get to the front of the line. Or like you're at a, a you know event and you're on the red carpet and here's this you know red velvet rope you know and only, only the top level people get into there and you're almost in you're in your own line looking over those people going wow they they must be special well you know not that you're going to give poor service to other people but when you get to the level of working with Louis and your elite producers you're working with they should be afforded some concierge level support because they're putting together huge cases that need it because guess what their reputation depends on the service you provide them so that their clients feel that same concierge level support that you're giving to the uh, producer yeah and, and it goes beyond just front of line right it's 
it's expertise. It's, you know, there, there's legal counsel that we have access to. There's specimen contracts we can draft up. I mean, there, there's a whole host of, of stuff that we can do just from a supporting the, the, I would say tactics of the sale as well, be, beyond just having front of, you know, front of line type service. So. I love it. Well, I think that uh, this is really spectacular. I love when I can see that when people do like the regular old job and go, yeah, that that's what other people do. But let me tell you where that's where we start. Where other people leave off, that's where we start. And we start building that credibility, connection, and communication, all of these things that that your producers must have. And then they start appreciating. And then that big, builds that long-term relationship. So I think it's just really spectacular what you're doing. Um, if someone listening to this was interested in reaching out, Connecting with you, what's the best way that they can learn more and then reach out to you, Louie? Sure. I'll, I'll give you my email and, and or phone number. So uh, my phone number, best way to reach me is 651-206-1297. Otherwise, by email, it is Louie, L-O-U-I-E underscore Slagle, S-L-A-G-L-E at AJG.com. Awesome. Louie, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.